Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Channel 781 News Waltham City Council debrief. Uh, this week in the City Council meeting, there was a training given by uh, Attorney Azadi, who is an attorney who works for the city um, for the councillors on ethics laws, uh, specifically open meeting law, campaigns finance laws, and conflict of interest laws. Um, so we'll talk about that. Also this week, uh, you may remember it last week, Chris had observed that it appeared that there was a meeting of the Aritzi Ward Committee um, where they made a decision to nominate someone from the award and it appeared that that award was never announced to the public. Um, so Chris actually submitted a complaint about that and uh, that complaint was brought up in this week's city council meeting and sent to the Ritzy committee. So we'll talk to Chris about that. Well, first let me introduce my co-host. I'm here with Chris Gamble. Hello. And James Krikelis. Hello. So keeping with our tradition of telling you about community events, the Steampunk uh, Festival um, was this past weekend. I was not there, but it looked like it went really well. Um, this Wednesday, so either today or tomorrow, depending on when you're watching this, Wednesday the 11th at 5.30, Councillor Paz is doing a meeting um, about dog parks. That's at 510 Moody Street. Coming up June 4th, as we've told you before, is Pride. Um, we just did a GoFundMe for that, which is going very well. So thank you very much to everyone um, who contributed to that. On June 11th, I just learned there's going to be an Italian festival on the Commons, sponsored by the group called Italian Festival, I'm sorry, uh, Italian American Alliance. And then on June 20th, I just learned about another new tradition for Waltham. The Waltham Black Future Fund is going to be putting on a celebration for Juneteenth, um, which is June 19th, but we get the Monday off for it. So the event will be on Monday. So I'm excited to have more info about that coming up. Uh, Chris, did you have some more info for us on these events? Yeah, just two quick anecdotes. Um, for Pride, uh, the local chapter of Food Not Bombs, we're doing a uh, donation drive. We're selling banana bread uh, with bananas that would otherwise go to waste that we got from a local supermarket that they were throwing away um, that they donated to us. And so we're selling those um, and all proceeds are going to Pride. You can find that on our social media, Food Not Bomb Waltham, or on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and then also Steampunk. I mean, it's been two years since the Steampunk has happened. I thought it went really well. There were so many people there. It was a little windy, uh, but I was very happy to see this tradition back in Waltham. Um, and anecdotally, uh, I'm close friends with uh, the cafe across the street, Cafe on the Common. And they said it was their busiest day ever in the entire history of Cafe on the Common. Um, so I, there were a lot of people out and I'm glad uh, people want to do things. James, any anecdotes? Nothing specific, but I, I I went as well, and it was a lot of fun. It was good to see all, see everyone, and uh, it was very busy out there. Um, but it, yeah, very windy too. Okay, thank you. So before we move on, I want to mention uh, Waltham Data now has a Medium page, a page on Medium. Um, we'll link to to it. It has these debriefs with the transcripts so that they'll be searchable um, in the future if you're researching, you know, a counselor's record on an issue, people will be able to do that. Um, we also uh, repost um, some articles from citizen journalists and we're hoping to recruit some citizen more citizen journalists to write some news articles for that medium and maybe if we have enough content to start a, a print zine so if you are interested in writing for waltham data writing about things going on in town please get in touch with me and chris you had more to add to that i believe yeah uh, visual aid um this is the uh, one of the prints of the last edition of the Waltham News Tribune, which is Waltham's uh, only newspaper. This is the last print that they're going to do because <clears throat> they've decided to go all digital um, on the front cover. They do have a bit about, um, you know, thank you for you know your support and it's critical to support local journalism and stuff like that. But this is the last Waltham paper that's ever going to be printed. Um, and so, you know, local media in Waltham has just always been bad and it's only, now it's only going to get worse. So, you know, we're really looking at ideas for how to expand this project, you know, not just we're, we're going farther than just city council debrief. We want to do like entertainment and culture. And so if you are interested in writing, if you're interested in watching, if you're interested in consuming 
culture in Waltham. We want to talk to you and figure out some way. You don't have to do this camera thing. You don't have to necessarily write anything, but just to be involved. Um, we were, were definitely looking to expand this because, you know, local media is very important and I want to focus on that uh, this year. Thank you, Chris. And Waltham Data, the idea behind it is also to promote transparency. So I'm very interested, to Chris, to hear about your open meeting complaint and the process behind that. Could you tell us more about that? So yeah, yeah, this is uh, kind of funny, kind of interesting. Um, so we talked last week about how I believe the city council screwed up and they didn't advertise a meeting that they should have advertised. They're required to do so. So I I've never I know that open meeting law complaints are a thing, and I've never done one before. So I was like, I'm gonna file a complaint, um, and so I did. Um, I filed it with the state and it said you had to send it to the city clerk's office. And so I sent it to the city clerk, uh, Joe Bizarre, who I, I'm a big fan of. And I was like, okay, we'll see what happens. You know, maybe he'll email us back. And then I was reading the docket. I'm going to share my screen uh, for a nice, another visual aid. So I was uh, scanning the, the, the docket on Thursday being like, oh, I wonder what uh, they're talking about at the city council this week. I look at the bottom. Open meeting law complaint, Chris Gamble, which I thought was hilarious. I had no idea this was going to be broadcast to the public. And when you click on it, I had no idea that it was going to show the entire complaint. And also, it, it has my it has my email to Joe Bizarre. <laughs> says, hey, Joe, I have a complaint for you. Thanks for all you do. I just thought that was hilarious. I had no idea this was. I thought they were going to email me or something. And so that was hilarious. And so I was wondering because um, there, I've seen one open meeting law complaint on the docket before from Bill Fowler when they didn't release the executive session minutes from the stigmatines taking um, for years. <clears throat> and so that was on the docket for a really long time. Um, and so I was curious if they were actually going to talk about this uh, open meeting law complaint. And they did. Um, and so Kathleen Minman was like, we have an open meeting law complaint. I'm going to table this until next week for you all to look at it. And then also I'm going to send it to the Kevin M. Ritzy Award Committee um, so you can talk about it there. And so this is way more than I thought this was going to be, you know, on a public floor. They're talking about this open meeting law complaint. And um, and Kevin and Mystery Award now has to meet again. I'm sure they, you know, they already awarded the award so that they probably thought they were never going to meet again until next year when this happens again. And now it's all on the open floor and the public open floor. And I mean, it's me calling out the city council saying they're doing a bad job. And I really thought it was gonna be way more private than this, but now it's a whole thing. Now we have a whole thing to talk about. So that is my update on that. It, next week, we'll talk about it again. Hilariously, at the Kevin and Ritzy committee, we're probably gonna to have to record that ourselves and they're gonna talk about the complaint that we filed. Thank you, Chris. So yeah, so actually I have a question about this and I'm gonna send it to James since uh, since Chris is a, a party to this. Uh, so when Councillor Mitch Meneman brought up, the, the clerk brought up the complaint, they sent it to committee, but at that time it seemed to me, so uh, Councillor Harris is the chair of the committee. So if there were, it seemed to me if there were some simple reason they didn't advertise that meeting, or if in fact they did advertise it and we made a mistake, Chris made a mistake, then they could have just said that then. So if, if they're sending a committee to committee, does that imply there's something more complicated going on or do, would they just send it to committee by default even if there was a simple explanation? Do you have thoughts on that? I, I have a feeling that this is just them following like procedure as they would or whatever procedure that they would. Um, and, and I mean, it, it definitely feels like slow walking it to make it take an extra two weeks just to get a response, but at the same time, I guess that the, the action would be that this gets sent to the, the committee. The committee then says, okay, we're going to send a letter back to council or something like that with the, the response. And that's just the, basically everything takes two weeks. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. Well, that brings us into um, the next part of the meeting, which was most of the meeting, um, was the presentation by attorney Azadi mm -hmm. about ethics laws. Um, and so this, I, my understanding is this is something that had been planned for a long time ago and got delayed due to COVID. So that's why they're having this presentation kind of in the middle of their session. Um, James, can you tell us more about that? So the, uh, 
there were several things addressed in the training. Uh, there was identification, uh, conflict of interest, and open meeting law specifically, and like the, the specifics of like each of those things. Uh, and I mean, like in, in the indemnification study section, and they were talking a lot about just how like, the the individual liability for counselors is very is limited uh, to some I think it's like a thousand dollars, and that gets covered by this fee anyways. But, like so, the counselors won't get held personally liable for stuff like this. It sounded like at least that was my understanding. And uh, re regarding conflict of interest, just they talked about the uh, the specifics of like what is and what isn't a conflict of interest and you can be put into conflict of interest just by virtue of being on the council after something like a specific thing happens um, and uh, Kathleen McMinimum related a story related to this uh, with the Fernald trusteeship that she had when it was purchased in back in 2014 where she basically the uh, trustee the trusteeship of that ended up dissolving us because she couldn't be on the on it um, uh, aside from that, they talked about like with the open meeting law stuff, they, specifically the reasoning why the uh, meetings are supposed to get posted on Thursday so that there's like several day transitions before the meeting and weekends don't count, uh, which I thought was interesting. And as for the, yeah, it, it, it was, a relatively like long training and they got into the weeds with several questions from counselors about like is this specific thing like an example like could this be a conflict of interest and getting responses from uh attorney azadi on, on those things but it was a very dry session i would say thanks yeah i thought it was not um the most thrilling thing to watch but i actually thought attorney azadi did a great job of explaining things in a concise but clear way which is often hard for it because they need everything to be technically right and, and that's not always concise but she did a good job and I think the video of this meeting will be good to have to check back to if oh, issues absolutely. come up about these in the future. Um, I had a question about Councillor Harris asked some questions during the period about open meeting and her questions had to do with um, they had to do with how many people constitute a quorum was one of them, and it had to do with the amount of time after a meeting um, to put out minutes, I believe. Um, did you get any sense of what she was getting at with those questions, James? No, but one of the interesting things I took away from that is that I guess uh, even like an email is not excluded from uh, open meeting law. And like if you have, if you have a quorum of counselors on an email, that can get them into trouble. Um, like ex expressing opinions on stuff, I guess. So Massachusetts has an open meeting law and the idea is the decisions get made in public. So if a bunch of counselors are outside or are at a restaurant or on a group text or whatever, and they discuss an issue, then the decision's not being made in public. So that was a lot of the presentation about open meeting is how not to have these conversations that could be a violation and that could include email as you said um do either of you know is this unusual to do this training as part of their meeting like do other municipalities do that like wouldn't you think the training on ethics would be like a separate thing that counselors do at the beginning of their term or or was there maybe a reason to do it in public maybe so the public gets the same information that they're getting i guess i felt the timing of it was interesting with the open meeting complaint coinciding and I mean, I, I've not been following city council that closely, but this is definitely the first time I've seen a training like this, um, at least in the time that I've been watching it. And uh, I, I would have expected some like the type, this type of training to be something that each counselor would be getting, you know, shortly after getting inaugurated. So it's kind of interesting that it's happening on the fly like this. I mean, it is hilarious that they uh, talk about open meeting law uh, violations while. Uh, you know, there's one against them right now, but this has been planned for a while. Uh, and in fact, if I recall correctly, which I think I am, um, I think this was originally planned for the last time new city councilors came in uh, because in the docket, it said, uh, work with the new councilor schedule to have the city clerk come in to do a training on ethics, uh, but that was postponed 
during the pandemic. So I think this is actually for the old new city councilors, but the pandemic delayed it so much that it's for this. Um, uh, to answer your question, I don't remember this happening before. Um, and I thought it was interesting. I do know that uh, counselors do get a lot of trainings um, from the state around things you can and cannot do. But I believe this, I, I, I don't recall Walton doing it before. So it's interesting and it's good, you know, it's recorded, you know, people are on the record and we can say like, oh, you did this, you, you did this thing, you know this and you know what is and is not possible. Um, so I thought it was super boring. Um, and for context, we're not, there's not a lot to talk about today. The city business was done at like 7.45 and the meeting started at 7.30. There was no special hearing. Uh, no, uh, there was four communications from the mayor, no resolutions. People can't think of a single thing to talk about and all in this weird time we live in. There's not one thing they want to talk about. So I just thought a little disappointing. That was such a short meeting. And there was one thing that came up in this meeting I wanted to mention because I think it, it is something people are curious about, which is the fact that when you speak at a meeting, you have to give your address. And a lot of people who are new to town politics find that weird because today there's not many contexts where you have to give out your address in public. But apparently that is a requirement of the open meeting law. It's not just a Waltham thing. Um, but what was clarified, uh, Councillor Cates asked a question and then Councillor McMenamin sort of followed up on it is, do you have to give your residential address you know, in, in sometimes when people are representing a company, they'll give the company's address. So when is that okay? And attorney Azadi said, the point of giving the address is to for a way to get in touch with you. If someone wants to, after the fact, verify that you are who you say you are. So actually you can give your residential address or your, your organization address. It doesn't matter. Either one's fine as long as it's a way people could potentially contact you after. Any other thoughts on that? All right, well, this was a short one. Uh, it, I'm not complaining, but at the same time, I agree with you, Chris, that it seems like I could think of some issues that haven't been discussed at all yet in this city council session that maybe will hopefully be discussed soon. Um, but we will be back next week with the city council committee meetings. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Bye.